Shooting out the lights like a young Kerry kills. Cross you up, no dribble. Pop you like some corn, but I'm not no fiddle top down Porsche Panamera. That's a cheetah, Gallic gun. Blasting, call me Young Vegeta. Carrie Kittles, born June 12, 1974. There's a few players in my basketball memory bank that hold a special place because of how they affected my basketball growth or the person they've become as men that make it tough and a little biased for me to have to document in a way that some perceive negative. I repeated them over the years and when it's giveaway time, I hope my day ones have been just as locked in as I have been these last three years. Salute to my man Troy Bell for having his jersey retired at Boston College last year. It's a huge honor to have an entire program stop everything and recognize you for what you did for them. You definitely deserve it and I personally have tons of respect for your journey. There you have it guys, that's one of them. But today's feature is another. Growing up in the 90s, early 2000s, Kerry Kittles was the man for me at some point. When I first fell in love with the game, lanky shooters were the first thing I was drawn to. Guys like he and Reggie Miller specifically. Not that he was better, but what made me like Kittles a little more was the athleticism he added to his shooting ability and how amazed I used to be watching his dunks. I mean, you see players slow down and gear up for dunks, but this guy went full speed and took off for one of the smoothest game-hyping tomahawks you'll ever see, and it had me standing on the couch, fist clenched every time, wishing I could do that one day, but mainly just happy I got to see that display. When you think of shooting guards and what they embody, Carey came just as close as any to the bar. He obviously could shoot, had a quick trigger and on to the next shot mindset, never turned down an open shot, and he defended pretty well for his frame and assumption he was just a shooter. I'm sure you can all maybe guess what stunted his growth, but honestly, there's really only one reason in my opinion, and if not for that, we'd be talking about Kerry Kittles, the Hall of Famer today. The other two, let's just put on our hypothetical helmets and dream for a sec what he could have been in these circumstances. Here are three reasons Kerry Kittles' growth was stunted. Salute to my man MannyBoy7 on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Quick reminder, if you want exclusive content like workout videos, ad-free features before they release here, and more, head over to the Patreon page now and become a supporter of pushing these stories and efforts to help any young hooper not have their growth stunted. It's something I wish I had, but didn't, so it's my offering to you. Appreciate you guys. Please drop a like and comment on this video, and let me know who I should do next. Enjoy the video. Stunt number one, let's play eras. At some point, maybe the year 6033, in the existence of humans as we know them today, there will be something created where fans can simulate past basketball players' careers in the era we want them to, and it can play out as if it happened for real. Helmets are still on, right? Okay. Because Kerry Kittles may be the first person I choose to play in this exact era today. Not saying the era he came up in didn't produce success for him, but imagine his game with the space perimeter players are allowed, the speed of the game, which was his calling, his size mixed with athleticism and shooting, and his defense that was occasionally underrated. Clay Thompson comes to mind when creating a today's Kerry Kittles, keeping in mind we're putting Clay in the 90s as well, which would arguably change at least Clay's scoring averages that he clearly on paper looks a tad better. Kittles, a 6'5 shooting guard, was born in Dayton, Ohio, but moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, where in high school he was all everything. By his senior year, he led his team to a 32-3 record and state championship, becoming Mr. Basketball for the state. 
After averaging 22 points a game, he decided to attend Villanova because of its Catholic structure, them playing on TV, its smaller size, and him having the opportunity to play right away. This was almost in jeopardy when the head coach at the time that recruited him accepted a job at UNLV right before Kittles' freshman year. Steve Lapis took over the Nova job and flew out the next day to convince Carey to stay committed, which Carey did and couldn't have been a better decision. From day one, Carey was an important piece for the Wildcats, starting 17 of 27 games, playing 32 minutes, and averaging almost two steals. What was more impressive was the career-high 43% he shot from three, attempting over three a game. As a sophomore, he really became activated, averaging almost 20 points a game, six rebounds, and almost three steals. He played an insane 39 minutes a game, which means he rarely ever came out. Stamina he credits to his high school coach Bernard Griffith. He would up his scoring and shooting averages as a junior while starting every game. Kittles was a star, and it's safe to say, in today's era, he would have already left for the NBA as a sophomore, or at least after the junior season he had, even though the team fell short and lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament. He was the Big East tournament MVP and All-American. As a senior, after achieving equal success, he entered the NBA draft and was selected 8th overall by the New Jersey Nets. Out the gate, he showed he could score, defend, and shoot the ball, becoming a second-team all-rookie performer. He was third on the team in scoring in a bench role averaging 16 a game and 37% from three. In this era, on a team as bad as the Nets were, that's easily 19 to 21 points a game, and although still may not have beaten AI for Rookie of the Year, would look a lot better on his resume. Also in this era, with better training, medicine, knowledge for things like recovery and physical prep, reasons like the next may not have happened either. Stunt number two, four knee surgeries in five years. By his sophomore season, Kittles was looking like a pillar for the Nets going forward after elevating his game in year two to 17 points a game and 41% from three. He was second on the team in scoring next to Keith Van Horn as the Nets improved their record from 26 to 43 wins and making the playoffs in 97-98. During this season, he began to complain about a sore knee in which some report he was overly encouraged to play on, which caused his injury to worsen over time and became really the only reason his growth wound up being stunted. He was having a great start on a team he had the green light and all the opportunity in the world, but because of the era he was in that didn't take injury as serious as they do today, and not having the right medical practices to ensure his recovery, he would have four crucial knee surgeries over the next five years that literally stunted his growth as a player. In 98-99, his third year in the league, he struggled in the shortened NBA lockout season mainly due to knee injuries and wound up averaging just 13 points a game and shot a career low 31% from three. For whatever reason, he was still playing extreme amount of minutes at 34 a game when his production was clearly saying he wasn't healthy. The Nets missed the playoffs that season and in 2000-2001 with Kittles missing that entire year due to cartilage resurfacing surgery in his right knee. He returned in 2001-2002 and the Nets reached the NBA Finals in back-to-back -back seasons, but it was clear Kittles as we knew him was never coming back. In 2003-2004, his final with the Nets, he played all 82 games, physically bouncing back from injury, but never reaching the potential he showed earlier, hovering around 13 points a game for the better part of his Nets career. The Nets traded him to the Clippers for the 04-05 season to clear salary space, to which Carey limped through what would be his final NBA season playing just 11 games. A career ruined as we see too often because of injury. 
stunt number three, retiring early. And the final stunt in Carrie Kittles' growth was him having to leave so soon when he could have had a legendary career and possibly make the Hall of Fame in Mitch Richmond fashion. He came in at 22 years old, and by 30, his body had broken down when it should have been just hitting its prime years. He kept busy upon retirement and got his business administration degree from Villanova in 2009 and focused on his ministry to which he continues today. He was also an assistant coach at Princeton from 2016 to 2018. All in all, Kiddos remains one of my favorite players of the 90s that had all the tools to be a great player in those days and translate with the game when it changed. But really, only because of injury, the game missed out on a very talented player. He still had a great basketball journey, and I have nothing but respect for what he was able to do, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.